welcome to a special edition of the Weekly Mag. Today we are celebrating our episode number 100. We have with us a very special guest, Tomas Molina. Our reporter, Humberto Gonzalez, has looked around for the craziest anniversary celebrations and will be topping off this exceptional program with a quiz presented by Sergi Cervera. And this is only the tip of the iceberg of the Weekly Mag, your TV show in English hosted by Marcella Topol. Hello and welcome. We are so happy to have reached our 100th show. Well, first of all, I want to thank all our viewers who have tuned in at some point during these three years to keep up their English, to get entertained, to learn new things or simply out of curiosity. And since we have so many things to do today, plenty of things to offer you, let's kick off words and facts with uh, our usual suspects, Matthew Tree, Mario Serra and Humberto Gonzalez, of course, welcome all. Well, um, I must say something very important. First things first, uh, Umberto looks stunning today. You look gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I had you to... take my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to I get. I mean, I, you've outdone yourself. Really? Thank you very much. I had to get dolled up for your 100th anniversary. I mean, two zeros is a big thing. Of course. Plus, I got to tell you, it's a little bit of a trick. I want you to remember me looking like this before you see my videos today. <laughs> okay, right. What did you do and where did you go? <laughs> well, I went to somewhere very special that uh, is the hometown of Bacardi and uh, Indianos and modernism, Sidges, and I happened to have a few friends there, so okay. I gathered them up and I created something a little bit special for you guys. Okay, can we have a sneak peek? Yes, but I haven't seen it yet either, so I'm kind of scared with you guys. You might have to cover your eyes. <laughs> no way. No way. I don't no know. Way. Let me see. <laughs> okay. let's, let's watch it. A hundred episodes tonight, my love. Uh, I'm just too high for me there. I can't do it. Scottish men in kilt. Uh, of course. Especially when they're wearing no underwear. Oh my gosh! That's me and you. Yeah. Are, that, are those all your friends in Sitges? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Including the one in the, uh, in the, in the flag. Did you uh, see that one? I, I know him well. <laughs> <laughs> that is so. a celebration indeed, right? That's a proper <laughs> celebration. Yeah. yeah, I had a good time. It was really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Everybody did a great job. Okay, well, and that's not our only surprise for today, because last week uh, Marius brought a special guest word uh, for us to crack today. All right, Marius? Yeah, special, but not especially difficult. Uh, you, you can, uh, I will remind it for you, 10 times 10 fortune tellers. Mm -hmm. Seven letters. 10 times 10 fortune tellers. Mm. My math side is working on this. Yeah. I have a good guess. Yeah, but uh, please stay, <laughs> wait for a minute <laughs> yeah. okay. that we have some time to. We'll keep it for it. ourselves yeah. for the moment, okay? And we would like to begin with Matthew today, who has uh, brought us a very, very special book. Actually, two books, but it's the same. So um, tell us about yeah, it, Matthew. A, a lot of people say, you know, a book changed their lives, but it's usually not true. They're usually exaggerating. In this case, I'm not exaggerating. This book, Teach Yourself Catalan, by the uh, Professor Alan Yates at the University of oh. Sheffield, this book changed my life completely. Um, I did have an original first edition, which came out in 1975, not long after Franco's death. Mm. And uh, I, I don't know, I lost it or it, it, it got torn up, I can't remember. This but, is a but 19... But this one is quite old as well, right? This is 1988, sixth edition, and it's exactly the same as the original uh, first edition. And um, yeah, this is how I, this is how I learned the, the language, so without... And many, many other people as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if I hadn't had this book, I wouldn't have learned Catalan. If I hadn't learned Catalan, I wouldn't have learned how to speak it or write it, and without knowing how to write it, I would never have published in Catalan. So it and you changed wouldn't be my here today. <laughs> and and I wouldn't be here today, today. <laughs> speaking in English. Wait, wait, are you telling me that uh, that book has not been out of print since 1975? Exactly, exactly. And in fact, the the author himself, Alan Yates, has been really surprised at that from 19. 75 all the way through to today when there's a more modern version out uh, this one here which came out in 2004 written with by him and Anna Pock 
um, it's been uh, it's never been out of print for all that time. Mm -hmm. And and so how come um, how come you just didn't take classes, Matthew? <laughs> back back when I was 19 in uh, <clears throat> 1978 or 79. Wait a minute. What? You've been actually speaking Catalan since 1978? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I don't think I believe you're British. <laughs> well, he is a half Catalan, right? Yeah, I'm an adopted Catalan, okay. put, it, put it like that. No, it's because back in 1978-79, which is when I was using uh, this book to learn Catalan, also obviously speaking with people and with friends and everything, but I needed a starting point, this was the starting point. Why didn't I go to classes? Because there weren't any classes at that time for adults. I mean, Franco had only been dead for three years, you know, things were just picking up. So uh, I didn't have any choice. It was this book and talking to people and reading or nothing. There was uh, no alternative. Okay, so you're self-taught. Wow. I'm completely, completely self-taught wow. in Catalan. I've never done, I've never been into a classroom to, uh, to, learn, to learn Catalan. May I say something? Yep. Me too. <laughs> That's a good really? one. That's a good Being one. Being in Catalan, I have never been in a classroom because I studied in Frankenstein. Wow. Fine. So I, my generation, being born in 1963. It's quite unbelievable. I, I have never uh, been um, in a class, in a classroom with a minute of Catalan. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm the only one that's taken a class here. <laughs> have you taken a class? Yeah, Which sure. I, in yeah. in okay, fact, la later on, in, <laughs> in just a second, I'd really like to ask you how you learned Catalan, Marius how he learned English, Marcella how she learned both Catalan and English, <laughs> being okay, Romanian. Yeah. Um, but first, I'd just like to explain a, a little anecdote that happened uh, about this book back in 1978, end of 1978. There was very little Catalan on television at that time. Uh, there were about four or five programs. They were shown during the, uh, the middle of the day, more or less, very low budget. And one of these programs was an extremely low cost chat show called Vuste Pregunta and it was presented by a very, very young Joaquin Puyal, who later went on to become a very famous Catalan broadcaster. And it was very simple. It was Joaquin Puyal, a physical guest, uh, a guest in person on the program, and a telephone <laughs> sitting on a table a bit like that one. And people could phone in after the conversation and ask questions to the guest. And one day, one of the guests was Alan Yates, the person who was, had written the book with which yeah. I was learning Catalan. So I decided to phone up Vuste Pregunta, and my Catalan was still really bad, but we managed to, we managed to have, me and Alan Yates, a little conversation um, on the television. And then we finished, said goodbye, so on. And then someone in the house, the phone rang, and someone in the house, this is in a Catalan village of about 5,000 people, said, uh, there's someone on the phone for you. And I thought, that's impossible. Nobody knows I'm at this phone number. Not even my family know I'm at this <laughs> phone number. And I said, who is it? And they said, someone from the village, but we don't know him personally. Mm. So I thought, this is really weird. I picked up the phone, said hello. And I got a guy who said he was in his, uh, I think, early 30s. And he said, I never thought in my entire life I would ever hear two English people talking to each other in Catalan on Spanish television. And there was a sort of pause. I was 19, I didn't know what to say. There was a pause and then he said, you do not know what we have been through here. And then he burst into tears on the telephone. And I was like, oh my God. You know, yeah, yeah. You know what have I got myself impressive. into? I'm almost bursting into tears here, too. <laughs> oh, it was um, very emotional, actually. Well, yeah. I have two questions on that. Um, did you ever talk to Alan Yates again? And the other one is, did you find out what drove Alan to learn Catalan? Okay, but don't cry, please. I know, I know. Can you see my eyes or what? <laughs> I can see that. You I got know. To... It's yeah, very, it's actually, very... it's easy to get emotional I about that because it is quite Alan impressive. I finally met 20 years, about 20 years after this conversation on Spanish television. Because I went to Sheffield University where he worked. Uh, I had to give a talk in Sheffield University. 
and he was there. And for me, it was like, you know, it was like Bob Dylan or William <laughs> Burroughs, you know, it was, I, I couldn't behave normally because this guy for me was a kind of, was a kind of hero. Legend. And a legend, yeah. And, and without him, I would never have learned the language and I wouldn't have been in Sheffield to give a talk even. So um, I never, his interest, yes, he told me his interest. Oh, good. It started on the Costa Brava, where he went for holidays when he was a teenager. And he heard these fishermen talking a language that he couldn't identify. And then he discovered the existence of Catalan, and that prompted him to uh, study the language. And then he set up, in Britain, he set up the very first university course for students of, of Catalan. And wow. already in 1978, he said he had 19 students, one nine, and they were, they were reading uh, classics like Tirán lo Blanc, um, wow. They were learning quite sophisticated Catalan, so that's your answer, yeah. How did you guys learn Catalan? Um, well, I actually took a course, unlike you, in 2015, not 1978. And um, I took a course uh, right three months right after I arrived in Barcelona, and I said, out of respect uh, for the culture, I should learn this language, and uh, especially if I want to live here. And uh, after three courses, I found myself um, knowing the foundation but not being able to speak still. So I went to Gracia for one year, every Friday and Saturday to the bars and immersed myself into the Catalan culture. And it was amazing. Uh, 2015. I, bet. I yeah. bet it was. Yes, uh, because they would say, you are from America and you're uh, speaking Catalan? No, no, the next beer is on me. Uh, pero ara, when I start to speak Catalan, I think that I'm lying that I'm from the United States. I think that I'm from Catalan and that I'm saying that I'm from the United States. And now I'm the one who has to buy the beer. The beer. Okay. How about you, Marcella, if I can ask? Well, uh, yeah, it was a while ago, actually. And um, I was studying at the University of Yash in Romania, and there was this Catalan teacher and uh, it was optional for us to decide whether we wanted to study Portuguese or Catalan or languages, or other languages, and I chose Catalan. Wow. And uh, actually, I started in Romania, and, and then I, uh, I came here and I uh, did an intensive course. It was like four hours every day wow. during a whole summer, and uh, I continued, and then I got my level C in nine months. So it oh. was a, kind of a record for me. Oh. That's amazing. No, it yeah. just reminded me of a story, a true story, about a yeah. Catalan who was in London in the 1970s. He had no money, he didn't know how to get any money, and he saw an advertisement in the newspaper for a businessman asking for Romanian classes because he had to go and work in Romania for a while. So the Catalan thought, as nobody no. knows what Catalan sounds oh. like, he gave Catalan <laughs> classes to this guy <laughs> and, and earned some money like that. And of course, this guy went to Romania and the first thing he did when he came off the plane was say, Bon dia! Bon dia. <laughs> anyway. Well, I see we all have different stories, which is very interesting. And well, something that does help English students are TV shows in English like ours. Mm -hmm. And the Weekly Mag is quite unique in this uh, category, as is the only English show on uh, all of Catalan TV, or Spanish TV for that matter. And during these 100 episodes, we've had many English speakers with us who have sent their congratulations, and here are just a few of them. I just want to send a big hug and say congratulations for those 100 programs. I will also encourage all the people to watch this TV show because it's amazing. Bye bye. Hello, uh, I want to uh, say and, and send uh, my very sincere congratulations to Marcela Topor for achieving uh, 100 uh, TV programs uh, with a very uh, high success. I uh, do hope that this will continue through time for hopefully many years. Well done and congratulations. I want to say congratulations to the Weekly Magazine on your 100 shows. It's been a pleasure to be with you a couple of times and I'll be honored to come back very soon. A big kiss for 100 more. I want to congratulate and wish Weekly Mag 
uh, on their 100th episode of the program. Uh, and I wish you many more. Okay, many thanks to uh, our guests for their messages and we still have many more which uh, you will see during today's show. We were talking uh, about learning English, but from a Catalan perspective, learning English has a few traps and Marius is the best person to tell us about that. Yeah, I've selected uh, three difficult aspects for, first of all, phonetics. Right. Mm, th there are lots, uh, l lots of examples, the, the most usual is from uh, the, the difference between E uh, and E. For instance, give me a sheet of paper. That's the obvious one for a Catalan, which is difficult. Or, uh, uh, I'm going to the beach, not to the beach, right? Okay. <laughs> That's but, quite different. Yeah, quite different. But in my experience, I remember uh, an O, a little O, because I was quite young with a group of people, some of them uh, girls, with me, and I was the one who knew how to speak in English. One of the girls wanted to buy a little owl that uh, she watched or she saw in a shop in the front uh, window. Shop shop. window. The shop window. Uh, the, oh, a little there. owl? Yeah, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, because that's uh, the problem. Okay. I, I <laughs> thought uh, I had to pronounce owl, but I came inside the shop with all my friends and, oh, please, could you please uh, tell me how much is it that little O over there? Pardon? No, that, that little O. Pardon me? <laughs> so the, the woman in the shop came with me and I showed that little beast and she said, oh, you mean that little owl? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 40 years ago, and I still remember her telling, owl, owl, like this, not owl. And all my friends uh, said, hmm, he doesn't know so much English, right? <laughs> so sometimes, how do you pronounce an owl? Owl. Owl. <laughs> and you? <laughs> owl. <laughs> owl. <laughs> I think now it's clear for everybody. Yeah. Owl. <laughs> but I have, a, I have a few things too, especially with uh, the English. I mean, I, they say uh, cemetery, and yep. I'm going, it's cemetery for us. So, um, so for me, it sounds like symmetry, but it's cemetery. Uh, sem is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And we say cemetery, cemetery. And it's a, a garage is, uh, for us, uh, we say garage, they say gay rage. For me, that's like a gay on a rage. And, uh, <laughs> and, and rage? Yeah. yeah, and so oh, yeah. I understand. I mean, I, I don't understand the Brits sometimes either. Yeah, and you guys say <laughs> subway for a train that moves underground, and we say subway for an underground passageway where you walk. Exactly. You know? But it's a metro. <laughs> Well, they say the tube, not in English. No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, and another thing, another aspect is vocabulary, of course, uh, mythical false friends. There are lots of examples. The, the main one being constipated. Oh my God. Yeah. I am constipated. No, no, not constipated, right? Or a, a carpet not being a folder. For oh, us, yeah. sometimes, yeah. or a girl, are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed? <laughs> Meaning, are you pregnant, right? Th these are quite typical, but my uh, favorite one was in Heath at Heathrow Airport with the police, and I, I think I was 14, maybe, going to one of these uh, uh, studies, travels, and uh, he told me something about customs something about that he asked me and I thought he was asking me for habits and I started well in the morning I, I have my breakfast very early and go to school and that man being a policeman I was very young and with long hair and looking suspect of something and, and I was just telling him my habits not my customs because it's quite difficult customs customs right customers and even costume for me, uh, everyone was like habits. Uh, that falls. <laughs> it's easy to get confused. Which are your best four friends in Catalan? Do you have anyone? No, I remember for a, a long while to say uh, when people, I didn't know the language very well, and if I gave something to someone, they would say thank you, and I would think in Catalan gracias, and then I would say 
estás bienvenido. <laughs> you're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I have my false friend is excited. I can't. I have to remember. I cannot say excited in uh, in Catalan. Estic excitat. Uh, <laughs> it means something else yeah. in Catalan. For me, it's uh, turmel, canel, and clatell. <laughs> when I started in Catalan at the beginning, I used to confuse these three a lot. You so. had your clatell at the turmel, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> And uh, uh, finally, uh, what is uh, for, for us, for Catalan people, a very difficult thing to, uh, uh, to study is phrasal verbs. Phrasal well, verbs, phrasal because verbs, yeah, irregular in verbs is a list, a limited mm. list, but phrasal verbs, it, it seems to be infinite. I, I, I don't know if you study them, get, it has 26 phrasal verbs with to get, only? to go, tw yeah, only, <laughs> 22 with to go, and 15 with put, for instance, my favorite one, put up with, mm -hmm. you have to, yeah. to tolerate that, you have to put up with, put is put something, up is up, and with, <laughs> you put up with, yeah, so I guess, right, what, it I, has no sense. Yeah, I guess English can be a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Do you study phrasal verbs at no. school? No, no, I don't. No, simply it's it's like uh, I know when something sounds wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Strange. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, phrasal verbs, one of the most difficult aspects of English for non-natives. Yeah, that's a general thing, uh, I guess. Okay, now it's time for uh, Umberto's report. We are very curious to find out what happened in sieges and uh, how did you celebrate? Okay, well, uh, the good part is that I interviewed more than just uh, Catalans. I interviewed uh, some people from Scotland and others from other areas. So you're going to get a little per different perception of how people celebrate uh, in other countries as well. In Take different a peek. places. Okay, but anything we should know uh, in advance before we watch the video? <laughs> I'm kind of scared throughout this whole episode, y'all. So I don't know. Uh, you still may have to close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> In America, everyone does something very special for their anniversaries, y'all. I wonder what the Catalans do, and if theirs are wild and as eccentric as ours, I should really dress up as a stripper for this, but I am reserved. A few questions about uh, anniversaries, birthdays. What uh, can you I'm tell me? Sure I haven't had that many. How old do you think I am, bitch? 20, 23? 23? <laughs> okay. Darling, tell me about your birthday. What do you do that's very special? Scottish food, whiskey afterwards, and we all did Scottish reeling, lots of dancing. Were there men wearing those uh, Scottish skirts? Strictly no underpants. They're not going to let me say it, but I'm going to ask anyway. Are some hanging lower than others? Some are definitely <laughs> hanging lower than others. And some need more wool in the kilts than others. Whoa! Yeah. I want to be invited to a Scottish party so bad right now. When I was 18, my mom and dad got me, um, what are they called with the big boobies? It was a woman. There was something very wrong with that. My best birthday was for my 40th, where I hired a small film studio in London and played my favorite movie, Moulin Rouge. And then when we got to the bit with a key number, we stopped the film and I did the key number and sang I love you till the end of time Come what may Come what may I... And it's too high for me there. I can't do it! <laughs> the wildest birthday that you've ever had. Lots of splashing. Well, I'm about to give you a surprise. Take it, boys. Come on. Look, you see that happy birthday. She said, take me anywhere, take me anywhere. Don't I saw stay clear. She said, take me anywhere, take me anywhere. Don't I saw stay clear. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. The blue or el bloque lower bar 75. See you there. El bloque with K. I was performing and I was wearing oh. um, a fishtail. No, 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 so, no, no, um, no, 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 no. So anyway, there was this guy and he'd had a few drinks and we had a good laugh and I was performing the, the, the Little Mermaid, so I had to wear a fishtail. I come in, in on a wheelchair because it was easy logistically. It was like perfect. I mean, you know how it goes. So um, I come in and this guy, he's had so much to drink. He gets down on his hands and knees, drops his trousers and wants somewhere, to, somewhere for me to park my wheelchair. But yeah, he wanted raw because it was pretty fun. 
I enjoyed it. That was the <laughs> I don't know. Nobody you know. Don't worry. Okay. Nobody, Nobody you know. I know. Nobody you know. What about strippers? Mm, well, strippers. It's it's hard to to do strippers in a nice way for gay guys because you know they can be a little bit. They expect a lot. They expect a lot. Love American style. That's me and you. A hundred episodes tonight, my love. The weekly max anniversary. That's me and you. Thank you. Love American style. Well, I may have to form an agency and offer some American ideas on how to do a birthday party or an anniversary here, ladies and gentlemen. For my 40th birthday, you guys know it, I want surprises. Love American style. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got very patriotic at the end of the video. Very nice. I, uh, well, you know, I wanted to surprise. There's actually a few more surprises coming up. You are not out of the woods yet. Really? That is a good idiom. But uh, <laughs> now I am afraid. Nice. Now I'm starting uh, to, but, uh, yeah, to yeah. become worried a little bit. <laughs> no, no, don't become worried. I, I'm going to keep my clothes on. Uh, but um, okay. But uh, I don't know. You just I'll, read my mind. I want to know how you guys uh, celebrate anniversaries. What about uh, anything spectacular or um, wild that you guys have done or gone to? Yeah, three days and three nights wedding. Three wow. days? Oh, that sounds where? That's in Mexico. Uh, Romania. No, it's Romania. Romania. That's, where, that's oh. in Romania. Oh, take me next yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? No, I, I keep my birthday anniversaries quite, quite low key because I'm not really quite sure what I'm celebrating, but. Um, there was one, my 50th birthday, where I thought, okay, it's my 50th birthday, I'm going to do something. So I rented a, like a venue in, in Barcelona, invited lots of people, and instead of drinking and eating, I just recited sections from my books in English and Catalan. Marius, who is a musician as well, accompanied me on blues piano as I, as I did the reading. And there was one moment where I read, uh, it hadn't come out yet, but I read the English original version of a section which had a lot of very rude words in it. So I told the audience, if there are any small children, they should be taken out at this point. <laughs> and it was actually a joke, but people started <laughs> taking, taking out, out their children. <laughs> and then I recited, recited it. Okay, I am going to have to do something for the both of you. <laughs> this is unacceptable. <laughs> What about, what about the American way of celebrating anniversaries? Is it very different from the Catalan one? I guess it might be, because we are all full of surprises, and the more memorable, the better. And I have something for you guys today, and I'm going to go ahead and sing you a little song I came up for you guys. Really? Yeah, um, are you going see. to sing? Oh, how nice. Let me see if I can try. Love American style and the senera too. Love American style, that's me and you. A hundred episodes today, my love. The weekly mags anniversary. Marcella, you shine with the show, my love. With the Matthew Serra and Matthew Tree. Wow. It's a little Woo! nervous. Woo! I love it. That's great. I love it. Okay. Thank you. That's a cappella. Thank That's you so great. much. Well, I get a little nervous singing in public always. But now <laughs> I have to actually tell you a little bit more that those videos that I do are actually a production of not just me. Danny Gutierrez, the cameraman and the editor, puts a lot of great time and effort into these uh, videos. And when I am up here, I feel like it's not just me up here. I feel like it's he and I up here. And we are both half of this team. So I wanted to say a little bit about him, uh, that he makes me feel really comfortable working with him. And because of that, our conversations on the way to make these videos are about our whole lives. And for example, I can tell you that sometimes they are surprising, shocking, emotional, shocking deep, shocking, even therapeutic, but shocking, most of all. <laughs> and I'm sure about that. It's quite clear. Yeah. And that's what makes it fun with him. And during the work, he's actually very helpful as well. So I said, I'm going to 
concoct a, some surprise for Danny as well. So today, for the first time that I've done this show, I have a third video wow. for you guys to see. And it's my surprise to Danny in thanking him for, for letting me be a part of him as well on the videos in this show. It's that's so great. nice of you. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to grab the camera away from you right now because this moment, Danny, it's about you. Give me that camera, boy. Come on. What? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, headphones too. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh. Ah. Thank you. Whoa! <laughs> I need to build that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, I suspect not all uh, cameramen get the same uh, treatment, right? Well, I, I don't know. There's actually one with a <laughs> mohawk that you have here with big thighs. That I <laughs> no, but nobody like Danny. Uh, Danny's very special. But I have one of my other surprises, and I brought it right here. Uh, don't get scared. When we do these anniversaries, we actually give you a gift. So I waited to give Danny his gift here on the show. And uh, at first I thought uh, I should get him that an underwear with my name embroidered on it like we normally do in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'd really but, like that. Yeah. But he's got a girlfriend, so I said I have to be respectful and you all know I'm very reserved. So instead I got him this t-shirt that says she doesn't know from my tour mm. of my song, She Doesn't Know Her oh. Husband Is Gay. And on the back, <laughs> you can see, <laughs> you can see the one song I tour that I did one. through New Zealand oh. and the United States and Australia as well, back in 2013. And now, it's time for me to actually sing another bit of that song. Can I actually sing that yeah, song? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, she doesn't know her husband is gay. She doesn't know he was with me today. She doesn't know why filming is so much fun. She doesn't know Umberto's on his iPhone. Gay. Gay. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I also have a surprise for you guys. So, Marcella. Another one. Well, I had to get one for you guys, too. It's part of the whole surprise uh, thing. So, Marcella, you. you also get one of these. Thank okay. You so much. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. And you guys, I actually brought you each for, you know how much I love these things, the uh, <laughs> belt buckles. So, Marius, you get a belt buckle with a C for Catalan, and you get Perfect. one with Texas, boy. You need to actually like, change that accent of yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, brilliant. Thank you so thank much, you Umberto. Thank you Then we need to say we loved, I'm sure you all love the videos, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love those videos. We need to say congratulations to, to Danny. Of course, congratulations to Umberto for your splendid work. We loved it. And I'd also like to take the opportunity to congratulate uh, both of you, Matthew and Marius because you've been with us uh, from the very beginning, from the very first show, and uh, thanks, and I hope we can keep on continuing working together. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I'm always Thank afraid you. to get fired. Thank you so much. Okay, and now it's time for the guest word, Marius's uh, weekly word puzzle. Yeah, as I said, it was very special, but also quite easy, because the hint I gave was 10 times 10. Yeah. Fortune tellers. Okay. It was seven letters. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I got to 10 times 10 is 100. I That's got okay. that far. The, yeah. you, you got it. <laughs> you got it? You, you can stop it. there. And why fortune tellers? What do they read? Cards. They read your hands so that a fortune teller, uh, of course, it's not the exact uh, um, phonetics, but You've got your hand red. Hundred. At hundred. We'll, That's we'll, it. We'll talk later, Marius. <laughs> okay. It was not what okay. I was thinking. Anyway, <laughs> I'm afraid. No, I'm afraid the next one isn't going to be so easy. No, but it's perfectly doable. Mm -hmm. I think so. Let's see. This is for music. The best music style for deputies or commerce. Seven letters. The best music style 
for deputies or comers. Seven letters. Okay, so can you crack our guess word? You can post your answer on uh, our show's social media profiles. Mario Serra will uh, bring us the solution next uh, Saturday. And Matthew, Mario, Zumberto, thank you so much for words and facts. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you. And uh, now we get to the part when we learn some new words and expressions with our English teacher. However, Mark Broderick is going to bring something different but very important today, a few tips so uh, we can all learn English faster and better. Check them out. Hi, welcome, and today's tips is a bit of a celebration. Of course, we've reached 100 episodes of the Weekly Mag. And to celebrate the 100th episode, I'm going to give you four tips that are going to help you improve your English even more. Tip number one, when you're speaking in English, don't translate from one language to the other. Don't think in Spanish or in Catalan and then translate into English. On top of being time-consuming, it could have some embarrassing results. For example, if you say, I am constipated. Well, that might mean one thing in English, but another thing in Spanish or in Catalan. As well, I am embarrassed could lead to a very embarrassing situation for you. The second thing to remember is to try and remember the whole phrase. Put the word in a phrase and use it. Let's take the word strut. You're like, strut? What does that mean? Well, imagine Mick Jagger strutting across the stage in front of the audience. He has a way of moving, this kind of like confident strut. So if you put it into a sentence, I saw Mick Jagger strutting across the stage live, then you'll begin to remember the vocabulary a lot better. The third thing to do, of course, is to repeat and imitate. Parrots, of course, can repeat and imitate vocabulary all the time, so it's a good way of learning. Rather than sitting down and writing everything out, if you hear a word, repeat it, imitate it, and that way you're improving both your grammar and your pronunciation. And the final thing that you should do is, of course, to use the words and phrases that you have learned. The next time you talk to somebody in a conversation, try and remember that you said the word strut or any other vocabulary that you have used, and that way you will incorporate it more and more into your daily vocabulary. And of course, how do we practice our English? Well, that's for the next tip. See you in a bit. Not only is he one of the most popular faces in Catalonia, we remember him every time we talk about the weather. Today on our show, we have Tomás Molina. I'm Clarence Becker, and I would like to congratulate the whole production team of the weekly Mag La Sarcia with a fantastic job that they did, and uh, congratulate them with their 100th edition of their program. Guys, keep it up. You rock! 100 programs. Very happy for you, but this is the result of your very, very good job. Hi, I'm Salvador Masip, and I would like to congratulate the Weekly Mag for the 100th episode. Well done, guys. This is a great show. Everyone should be watching it. Lots of fun, lots of things to learn. Go, Weekly Mag. Congratulations for reaching 100 programs. I'm Albert Bosk, and I am so proud to be part of one of them. Maybe not the best one, but for sure, one of the most energetic and full of adventure. You are doing a great magazine with super interviews and great ideas. Really, congratulations. And you know, now the goal is going for the 200th floor. Welcome back. One thing you know that we like to do in our show is recommend films and books in English and we are happy to do so when they are easily at hand in the Xarxa de Bibliotecas Municipales of the Diputació de Barcelona. Today is no exception, so I recommend you to pay attention to our librarian Salvador Faura and our cinema expert Miquel López from Televisió de Badalona. A Tale of Two Cities is the story of a number of people who have uh, several adventures in London as well as in Paris during the time of the French Revolution. The book has all the characteristics of uh, Charles Dickens' narrative. You have uh, poor orphans, 
you have uh, social unrest, you have uh, working class injustices, and you have a number of events that change the life of people. If you've never read Charles Dickens, this is a good way to start. Hollywood talks about Hollywood. There are a few movies that let us have a look, real or false, at Tinseltown and filmmaking. For example, we can say Sunset Boulevard or Singing in the Rain or La La Land or this one, The Bat and the Beautiful. The great Vincente Minelli directed this story about a film producer who has a complicated relationship with almost everybody. One after another, a director, a movie star and a screenwriter explain what they think of the producer. This 1952 movie has a, an extraordinary, very Hollywood cast with the names of Kirk Douglas, Lana Turner, Dick Powell, Walter Pigeon, Gloria Graham, Barry Sullivan and Gilbert Rowland playing major roles. The Bat and the Beautiful is a must for all filmmaking and Hollywood lovers. So have you ever wondered why thunder is so loud or how we can predict rain? You don't have to be a weather forecaster to understand all these questions. And today's guest has decided to show us just that in his latest book. He's probably the weatherman we all think about in Catalonia when you hesitate about uh, whether or not to take our umbrella when we go out. And of course, uh, his name is uh, Tomas Molina. Welcome. Hello. Okay, today, as you know, we celebrate our um, 100th program. So, oh, congratulations. really happy that you could come and join us uh -huh, for this. That's three years. Exactly. Wow. That's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. So, we're uh, very happy that you could come Thank and you. celebrate with us. For us, it's, a, it's an honor to have oh, such me, a great course. and popular, uh, well, uh, TV presenter, mm -hmm. uh, somebody that all Catalonia knows, of course. So tell us, uh, Tomas, you've, uh, you've done so many shows, so many programs. How do you celebrate when mm. you reach a round number like we, uh, we do had, today? We had that uh, occasion uh, with uh, one program we did at, at Televisión de Catalunya. Uh, that was uh, Spy Terra. The, it was a kind of environment program. Yes. And we got at the end, I, I, I don't know, it was like eight years. <laughs> and, I, and it kept going, those hundreds and so on. Uh, but I think that more than half just 100. The thing is that you have uh, uh, people who work with you and, and people who stay with you at, from home and make relations, a stronger relationship with you once you are still there for, for exactly. three years. No? Then you have to be grateful to the people and, and, and to share with them, with your people, and, mm -hmm. but also with the of people. Course. Uh, of course, that this program still... wouldn't be possible without a great team and, mm -hmm. and you know that, so anyway. And with a good job. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Also, I mean. <laughs> of course. Well, let's. Uh, you're talking about good jobs. So let's uh, talk about your book. Yeah. Meteo Curiosities. 50 Secrets para Entender el Temps. In English, 50 Secrets to Understand Weather. That's a very interesting title. It makes you want to read this book, which also is so has such a funny cover. Um, how did the looks idea... Looks like me, eh, this guy? <laughs> looks like you. <laughs> Indeed. Right. Um, how did the idea uh, come about? And but, I think your children had a contribution yes, to, to this. Yes, but the idea was not mine. Uh, those people from, from Penguin Random House uh, okay. came to me and asked me to, to do the book because I was... In fact, I was not really keen to do the book because I was really, I'm working now on my PhD because I want to be a I doctor, a doctor before <laughs> 60 because I'm an old man now, almost old man. But then they, they pushed me to, to write this book. And, and in fact, at the end, it was a nice, a nice experience because uh, the, the drawings by Roger Simo, they are excellent drawings. I mean, the, the, all the graphs and, 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 and the feeling you have there. It's really there, attractive. It is. It, it is. makes you want to read it. And it's very precise. That's what I like it. Because mm -hmm. I ask them, I need this, this place of the thunder that is going to come with a tornado to be this kind of green. And then he just did that kind of green I wanted. That, mm -hmm. that, that's good. That's brilliant. Um, you coincided. You, uh, it means that you worked well together and the result is great. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, 50 secrets about weather. Tell us some uh, little, a little secret, a little secret. one or two. You, you told that, <laughs> about you, you said book. that my children helped me to do that. In fact, it was the, the experience I have I had with my children because uh, I remember we were driving on the on the Alps and they say, "Wow, Dad, there's this thunderstorm there." I said yes, and then when you arrive, when we arrived there, there was a big thunderstorm, and they said, "Wow, it's gonna it's gonna be hail here." I said, "Yes, yes indeed." And they, wow, it was <laughs> hail there because you they have learned everything. to see, understand, and remember. That, that that's the three words. I think I, I work in this book. See? To see, just to watch and see, and then understand what you are you what you are you looking. I mean, you see ah, that thing is that thing. Uh, that it, uh, this is the the meaning of what I see is that, and remember to okay. keep that in your mind and be able in the future when you see it again okay. to do the forecast. See, understand and remember. Yep. Three very important words. Okay, what about, um, uh, you say in this book, uh, well, there are some really uh, interesting and like curious facts, such as the fact that um, the ants, being so small, they can predict uh, yes, uh, the weather. Yes, because of the smell. Really? Yes. Well, I don't know if ants have a smell, <laughs> or maybe <if> the, <laughs> for okay. the antennas, because once, once the pressure is going down, that okay. means that, that the air is going up, and then it, when the thunderstorm form, uh, when the air goes up, that of course comes also from, from the ant uh, hole. So imagine that you are an ant, and you want to enter to the, to the, the whole little hole of your, of your colony. Okay. I said, Whoa, that's this smell. That means it's gonna rain. Okay. For a for an end. All right. What about uh, it happens again, maybe sometimes with uh, with uh, at home. When you enter the bath and it's mmm, it's not good. Yes. That it's gonna rain. Right, because of the pressure, right? The atmosphere. Low pressure, pressure also. means the air goes up. All right. Mm -hmm. What about uh, I don't know, there are other animals who could uh, predict uh, the weather? For example, there is this popular belief that uh, when you see the cows mm -hmm. um, just uh, laying down in a field, it mm -hmm. might be possible to have rain. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? The fact is that all animals can predict weather, even uh, humans, because even we humans are animals. Because we're uh, also but, animals, of course. But because you just need to, to be connected with the environment. Uh, maybe humans, we are, we have more things to remember or more things to be to care about. So we are less connected with the environment. But the best uh, machine that, that registers uh, humidity is made with human hair. So, well, most people, you more than me, <laughs> we wear uh, like a hydrometer on, <laughs> on our hair because many people know that when, when, it's, rain, when it's raining or when it's humid, the hair uh, is different. You can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> hair is different when it's humid yes. than when it's dry. Okay. When you have that's, to fight with true. it, no? Yeah. Then exactly. if you can make the correlation between do, both two things, then you have, you, you have the ability to predict the weather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that indeed. <laughs> okay, um, more things about uh, weather, curious uh, facts. Uh, for example, that um, it can rain a lot. In English, they say uh, it is raining cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. But in your book, sometimes it rains frogs or fish. How <laughs> yes. is that possible? I was some, once in a, in a place that has been raining uh, frogs, small frogs, little frogs. Uh, that happens when when you have something that pull the frogs out from the water. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is uh, what we call a tornado, a little tornado, small tornado, that sometimes co comes with the thunderstorms. Then if you have that thing that mm, like uh, spars and that, that brings the, the frogs from the water yeah. and put them on the cloud and then when it rains, okay. go down. Uh, mm -hmm. and that happens again in, in the Maresma, here in, in the coast of Barcelona. Really? Uh, sometimes rains uh, fishes. We could say in Fish, Catalan, really? not, not cats and dogs, but uh, frogs <laughs> and fishes. <laughs> <laughs> but here, but okay, I've never seen that in my life, but uh, <laughs> yeah. 
It's, it's, uh, I just, uh, I was curious to, to find out if, if it's real uh, and if it can happen in Catalonia and now we have the answer. Yes, because in, in, in the Maresma it's very common to have uh, small tornadoes, uh, okay. what we call them managas, uh, uh, water, water spools, mm -hmm. uh, that tornado that is on the sea. And then, because it is on the sea, if there are fishes there, that goes salt water, okay. but also fishes, and then they I can come I too. had no idea. <laughs> we learn a lot uh, today. Well, uh, let's uh, talk about yourself, about your career. Uh -huh. uh, your English is very good. Thank you um, very much. I know you practiced it a lot also when you went uh, to the UK to, uh, uh, to, to train. Uh, uh, you'll tell me what you did uh, there at the BBC. Mm -hmm. How was your experience at the BBC? It was and my first time watching a TV station. It really? was a long time ago, it was in... in so it was uh, before uh, TV3? No, it was just I started to, to work at TV3 in 1987 and in 1988 uh, I was in, in Scotland at the University of Stirling and I had the, the opportunity to, to go and visit the BBC. It was my first time in another yes. TV that was not mine mm -hmm. and it was kind of impressive. I met Michael Fish. Wow. He was very famous there. He was the one who predicted that it's not going to happen uh, a hurricane in England. Mm -hmm. And the hurricane came. <laughs> so he was very famous for failing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're very involved with the climate change, actually, we can see uh, yes, today. Exactly. SDO, yeah. So I know that you, um, well, you have chaired important institutions in Catalonia and abroad. Uh, let me mention just one of them, the International Association of Broadcast Meteorology, which you founded, and also the Climate Broadcasters, New York Europe, of the European Commission on Climate Change Communication, and so many more, but we don't have time to... Uh... In fact, nowadays I'm ambassador for the European Pact Climate. Uh -huh. So, of the European Commission, yes. That sounds impressive, and I, I know you're very involved mm -hmm. uh, and committed with the climate change, and I guess all these experiences have helped you a lot, no, to raise people's awareness. So, what's happening with the climate change? Is there any solution? What do you recommend us to I, do? I recommend that we have to learn with the COVID. With the COVID, we have learned to flatten the curve. I mean, it's in all our minds the need of flatten the curve of the COVID. No? Yes. And, and we have realized that we can do something to flatten the curve of the COVID. We, have, we need to change maybe sometimes our, our way of behaving. We need to maybe stay more at home. We need maybe not to, not to travel so often as we used to have, as we used to travel, or we used to, to be more local. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's exactly exactly the same thing we need to do to flatten the climate change curve. Okay, are and we going to... It has to be done as soon as possible, like the COVID. You know, the COVID, we, we realize that, whoop, whoop, it's here. We need to yeah. act now. In, in the case of the climate change, we need to act now. Will now. we have to, to move to Siberia in 25 years because uh, of uh, global warming? It's happening in Siberia and in several places on the north of of uh, Russia, uh, for example, this they call they call it the Devil's Holes. They are appearing in the last 10 years, more than 30 Devil Holes. That means uh, the ice on the underground it's melting, so it it creates a, a, a ball of gas that explodes and makes a big hole. A big hole means like 50 meters uh, wide uh, because of the explosion of the gas. Mm -hmm. of the subsoil, of, wow. the, of, the, of, the, of the underground. Mm -hmm. uh, it's happening, in fact, it's happening. It's, the whole world is warming, but especially the north part, the north part, the, the north part of Siberia and the North Pole and the south part of the whole globe is the place where it's more fast uh, warming. Okay, wow. Well, we'll continue talking with uh, Tomas Molina in a moment. Our contributor Georgi now will tell us uh, that he's not just a popular man on TV, but also an influencer. But first, uh, we invite you to watch some more messages from our previous guests. 
Hi, I'm Matthew McDaid. I uh, just wanted to say congrats to the Weekly Mag for reaching 100 episodes. Uh, congrats to the whole team for all the hard work you're putting in. Um, it really means a lot to have a show in English where people can, can learn about the language and not only that, but to learn about some of the culture and uh, you know their day-to-day -day life. So congrats to the whole team. Hello, tanti auguri, muitísimas felicidades. Wow, 100 programas. Happy, happy birthday! It will taste so, so good! Cheers! Congratulations on these 100 programs and go for 100 more! Mwah. Congratulations and celebrations, Weekly Mac! 100 programs! All of you should watch the Weekly Mac! Happy 100 programs! Thank you! Congratulations, the Weekly Mac, for this amazing anniversary! You completely deserve it for the joy and the energy that you put on it. I'm really happy and I'm glad to have been part of uh, your show. Thanks for having me and I encourage you to keep going and let's go for a hundred more. She's a brilliant mathematician and an accomplished pianist. Stay tuned for our interview with Laura Ferré. Welcome back. Uh, we are here today with uh, Tomas Molina talking about something more than weather. Indeed, Tomas is a multi-talented person and let's find out about uh, this with our contributor from Televisio de Girona, Georgina Arnau. Welcome, Georgina, and um, tell us, um, what new information are you going to tell us about uh, Tomas Molina today? Um, hi, Tomas. Nice Hello. to meet you. Hi, Marcella. Thanks for having me again. Well, actually, as you said yourself, uh, today we will only learn about isobars or climate change and storms because in the recent years, Tomas Molina has become an icon in social media with more than 80,000 followers on Instagram. That's a lot. <laughs> beauty tips. People at beauty home. tips because beauty tips. <laughs> you see me, no? You see me. I'm, of I'm quite of a beautiful guy. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that <laughs> in a while. Of course, uh, jokes and behind the scenes um, that, uh, of course, uh, have greatly appealed to a lot of Catalans at home. And I want to put the focus, especially on that beauty tips, because pay attention, Thomas has the secret, the clue to make you look hot in pictures. Watch this. <laughs> Consells per destacar en les fotografies de grup, il·luminar-se, que vosaltres podríeu dir motivar-te, estar buen horno. I com s'està buen horno en una fotografia? Doncs creient-s'ho. I això com es fa? Mira, estàs buen horno. La cosa és deixar-se mirar. Te us acostumar a deixar-vos mirar. Per tant, il·lumina, gest i està buen horno. <laughs> easy That's, peasy. It's, it's easy peasy, it is, because you just need to let people look at you. Hello. As you see. <laughs> but In actually, fact, and sometimes it's, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous? But yeah, it is. Because sometimes you lose your mind, you don't remember how are you in fact in real life, and then you, you can go out. Tomas, um, what happened? I mean, uh, when did you decide to put uh, on your Instagram account uh, this kind of post? Mm -hmm. It was my, my son, my little son, my Juan, uh, who, who told me to do that. It was in like two years ago, or two or three, two years ago, I think, when he was 16, 16 years. And then I said, well, I will start doing that, but you must tell me what to do. You will be my, my senior advisor. And I did what he said, and that's why people who follow me, it's people from 16 to, to 17, 18. Nowadays, he's now 18, so it, they are going older because okay, of my- teenagers, teenagers. Teenagers, yeah. maybe. Because <laughs> so, I'm like a teenager, <laughs> it look like. Actually, um, before we go on, because we have uh, more uh, videos, I need to learn step by step. Uh, and of course, people at home, I'm sure they want to also uh, know about your tips, these tips you, to enlighten ourselves, to illuminarse. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is this trick? Mm -hmm. That's a trick I learned at the BBC. Really? Yes. Uh, in my first uh, visit there, what you, I told you, uh, 
the, 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 woman, the woman who was there said, what, st uh, wait a minute because I'm going to be live. Okay. And I saw her and he was kind of a mom. Just like remembering what, mm -hmm. what, what she was going to say. And then in the one moment he, he did. Okay, let's do this. Wow. Can we do it? Can you show us how to do it? Show us. Can you show us? And we'll try. I mean, you sometimes go to visit a friend and then you're waiting on that place just in front of the elevator, which is dark, sometimes a little that is not working properly, and then you are kind of scary. Yeah. And then you ding dong, and then you hear the person who comes. And it's scratch, 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 and so you do like. <sighs> <laughs> okay, changing a bit your mood. <laughs> okay, in, in, of course. In fact, it's just and your position, your body kind of position, of course. Aspiration and is is uh, your 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 side? Okay, so do you think we are illuminated? Illuminated. Yeah, Georgina, are we yeah. illuminated now? <laughs> yes. What do you think about Very, us? I mean, illuminated. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Let's continue. Okay. Yeah. Let's we move are on. illuminated. We can yeah. continue. Yes. <laughs> we can go on. Actually, <laughs> there's uh, there's another tip uh, because um, actually this this is very interesting for those at home, uh, of course, too, uh, who like to wear blazers. What's this? <laughs> Dues normes per quedar elegants amb el traje. Té a veure amb els botons. Never, always, sometimes. Mai el de sota, mai es corda el de sota, sempre es corda el del mig i alguna vegada es pot cordar el tercer si és que el teniu a l'americana. I la segona norma, never ever, us heu de seure amb el botó cordat. Per què? Perquè si no us passa això, fixa't, te seus i et queda l'americana Yeah, true. <laughs> That's uh, really important. Does that work for women as well? Of course. Well, in fact, in women it's even worse because if you sit in and then you sit and you, well, you have more things than I have, yeah. <laughs> then well, what I happens to me happens even worse in a woman. So it's, you have to be elegant while sitting, like open. Okay, got it. I forgot mine, actually. Huh? I, I, I forgot mine, <laughs> my blazer today, so I can, I can do it. So, Tomas, how different do you see the camera on your phone from the one on the set? I mean, we are watching uh, two different Tomas, for sure. <laughs> I try not to, because uh, the, the idea is you need to find the place to look at. You have, you always need to, 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 to look to the eyes, to the, to the people who's watching you. I mean, you, you have eyes now, but on the camera, you need to, to focus on, on that little thing on the center of the camera. And you can do it in a, here, which is mm -hmm. a, a professional cameras, but also you can do that on your phone. Once you look at the hole, <laughs> at the little hole, then you are looking to the eyes of the people who are watching you. Mm -hmm. So do you don't think that you have another character? You are like um, doing as another Tomas? Uh, myself, I mean, maybe yes. Social because networks. When I'm doing the when I'm doing the weather, I cannot like yeah. uh, be so spontaneous. Okay. <laughs> so I have to be more constricted. But in fact, I'm always me because I'm I'm this. Mm -hmm. That's I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I'm this. I never. I never. I think it's one thing I have for good, is that I'm 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 real. I'm. You're I'm natural this. and I'm this. you're uh, authentic. I'm this. Yes, indeed. I cannot do anything else than this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for another tip? Do we have time, Marcello? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Looking forward to it. So now, uh, selectivitat. Have a look. Tres consells per que us vagi bé la selectivitat. El primer, anar-hi tranquil, sentir-vos tranquils. Segon consell. Alerta amb el segon i el tercer dia, perquè el primer dia vas molt concentrat, però el segon i el tercer dia un es pensa que ja li ha anat bé i aquests dos dies són els que un pilla més. I tercer consell, jo crec que el més important, oblidar, però completament, com si fos una paret. Hagi anat com hagi anat qualsevol dels exàmens de qualsevol dels dies, oblideu completament. I així, el segon examen que feu és com si fos el primer. I was looking that that sofa was sitting it, was had no had not I don't know the word for that. What's that? The the, the What's cushion? That? The cushion. Yes, cushion. Yeah. Had yeah. no cushion. Yeah. So I was kind of <laughs> have you realized? <laughs> I was kind of oh God. It's so not So you were working I mean, out. I was going, oh hello. <laughs> I'm I'm very 
So besides these uh, beauty tips uh, and beauty secrets, of course, your help and advice um, about Selectividad exam, also talking how to talk during Christmas meals mm -hmm. and uh, how to play the guitar. Uh, what is the aim behind all these posts, all, all these videos in your Instagram account? Again, it's always my son. Okay. <laughs> it's not me really. But okay, it's so my maybe son. we should also interview your son. Yeah. <laughs> yes, maybe. Yes. He should be here with us. <laughs> In exactly. fact, it's, I'm, I'm always lost, saying what, what I have to do, what, what I need to do for the next uh, post. And I was asked my, my son, I, I have a problem at home because I have two sons and one daughter. And this, my advisor, my senior advisor is the youngest one. And my older is my, son, my daughter. And she's kind of uh, scared of me doing another post, you know? <laughs> because all her friends say, what have done you, what would your father have done? In the last part, you're gonna have, no, please don't. don't, don't She's don't slightly do embarrassed, right? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, and are you um, going to, or have you thought about making any videos in English as well? Because you could reach a greater audience, maybe. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> now I, don't know. I, don't I know. can see you haven't thought about it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was thinking on, on doing a, a kind of a internet uh, classes of meteorology. And, and was working with my elder mm, daughter uh, to do that, but we haven't done it yet. Okay. But in fact, I, I, I like the, 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 this new thing of the, I don't know, the, the YouTube, the Instagram, the Twitch, and I don't know, the Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. I like the, the, the new possibility that, that gives people to, to realize themselves and to, to be able to do their own things. And I'll try to do the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, during the conversation, Tomas, we've talked about uh, different things, but we still have one uh, last question for you. It's called the question chain, and it means that we ask all our guests who ask a random question for our next uh, guest. And we last interviewed the director of Magba, Farhan Baramblit, and he came up with this question for you. My name is Farran Baramblit. I'm the director of the Magba, the Museum of Contemporary Art of Barcelona, and I have a question for you. How do you imagine that in two, three, four decades, a work of art, a theater play, a film, will explain the pandemic? When we look at the past, we usually see it through the eyes of an artist or a writer. And would you imagine how somebody will write, paint, think about the pandemic in some years, and that will be the word that will be referential to understand this situation? That's a good question, in mm -hmm. fact. I, I was Red thinking question. when he was uh, posing this question, I thought in, on, the, on the Spanish uh, flu, we still talk about the Spanish flu. Indeed. And we see it like, like very distant, very uh, dramatic, but at the same time, very close to us. That, that was at the beginning, one year ago, at the beginning of the, this pandemic. So I think maybe in, in three decades or something like that, we will... Um, erase from our minds the, the, the Spanish flu, and we, call, we will talk again about the COVID as, as it was something very ancient, but at the same time, very close to us. I, I, maybe if I was an artist, I would find to, a place to, to, to see this way, far and close, far and frightening at the same time. Mm -hmm. Interesting, uh, interesting answer, I think. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Well, and Do, Tomas... you remember when it, when it started? It was in China. Mm -hmm. It was far. It was yeah. not related to us. Not and really. just like four weeks, three weeks, five weeks, mm -hmm. it was here. So even in Italy, we see, we saw it's it. In Italy, far. That, it's far. Yeah. Oh, it's in Italy. It's it, it yeah. not it not has any relationship with us. And at the end, pop, mm -hmm. it came. <laughs> Apart from uh, be the weatherman, right? <laughs> Um, are you going to? Um, are you involved in other projects? You just finished uh, this book. Are you going to write more books or doing uh, other projects? I have my project. I told you uh, my PhD. This is my main project of my whole life. I want to be a doctor. I don't know why, but I want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm also related to, to publish in, in scientific papers. I like I've, this year, this pandemic year. I have made five publications in in, in I mean in good magazines, scientific magazines, I will try to, to keep doing that. This and is a serious job, right? 
is, it is. Because it's quite they, hard to, uh, to get to write articles in these uh, publications. It is. It's because when you send easy. the article, then you have three reviewers that, that wow, <laughs> they start to say, is wrong, wrong, this is wrong. This is bad. This is a bad approach. This is what <laughs> you know. It's it's difficult, but it's I like it. I like it. And another thing, it's I have a project. Maybe it's going to happen soon, of a transmedia uh, program, not for mm. TV, but for different like Instagram, YouTube, and so on. That will be the one of the first uh, um, tries. Of television of Catalonia to enter in another kind of media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, oh, it is interesting. Brilliant. Environment, yeah. maybe. Transmedia. Maybe. Well, anyway, Tomas, it's been great to have you here with us Very today. Much. We've talked about weather, of course. We've talked about the climate change, about uh, Instagram, and we don't have more time. Maybe, maybe you can come again and tell us more stuff, and maybe you can also translate this book into English. It's now translated into Chinese. Into Chinese. It's gonna wow. be on maybe in, in next month, translated into Chinese. Excellent. And I will do the weather in Chinese. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. sounds good. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you again. You're welcome. And thank you, Georgina. Until next time. <laughs> thank you, Martel. Okay, and we still have lots more guests and surprises on this show number 100. And now our teacher Mark Broderick is back with more tips to help you practice your English. Check it out. Hi, welcome back. Well, I told you that I was going to give you some tips about putting your English into practice. Well, here we go. Don't worry, I have four top tips for you. The first one, of course, is to watch your favorite TV series in English, or a movie even. But TV series generally are easier because they're shorter episodes. So how do you go about it? Well, the first thing you do, of course, is to switch the audio to original. Of course, you're not going to watch it in Spanish or in Catalan, okay? The second thing that you might do is put the subtitles. But always try to put the subtitles in English. It's good to listen at the same time as seeing what the person is saying, because then you can learn to pronounce things better and see grammatical structures a little bit easier. The second thing, of course, is to surf the internet in English. This might be difficult sometimes because a lot of your settings on your phone or your computer could be preset in Spanish or in Catalan. But it's very easy to change those settings and to begin to surf the internet, whether it be social media, looking for your sports news, looking for news in general, or just reading interesting articles. It's a wonderful way to improve your vocabulary and, of course, to see the different nuances in the English language. Now, Talking and writing in English is, of course, one of the most important things. And how are you supposed to do that? Well, get out there and meet new people. I'm sure that you have a circle of friends whereby some of them may speak English or have indeed lived abroad for a period of time. This is a good way for you to say, listen, why don't we speak in English for a while? Or indeed even do a language exchange. Writing emails, chats, whatsapps, etc. is also a wonderful way to practice the writing aspect. And finally, of course, to practice your English is to meet people. Of course, traveling is the best way that you can go, or indeed going to live in the other countries. Meeting new people, speaking in English, is the way that you will learn the language the fastest. And of course, if all of those, and you cannot do any of them, fail, well, you have 100 episodes of the Weekly Mag, 200 hours of excellent, high-quality content in English. So go back and have a look at some of our earlier episodes on our website. Enjoy. So if you've heard that music and mathematics can be closely related, well, you're right. And our next guest is the best example. She has a unique and a very special artistic profile. This Catalan pianist, mathematician and researcher is finishing her PhD in maths and music. And in the meantime, she is uh, presenting Nimbus, her second solo album of uh, contemporary music. Her name is uh, Laura Ferre. Welcome, uh, and it's a pleasure to have you here at the Weekly Mag. Thank you so much. Today. Well, you have um, four important aspects in your life. You define yourself as a pianist, mathematician, researcher, and presenter, mm -hmm. fall in one. So how do you manage to combine all these uh, four elements? 
Well, I think that in a way I have two main interests. One is uh, contemporary music and try to disseminate that to the general audience. Okay. And the second one is mathematics and especially those connections between music and mathematics. So during my different uh, professional profiles, I try to combine all of this. So I have with my solo albums, what I try to do is precisely to uh, disseminate uh, contemporary works that are not necessarily being performed a lot in performance venues these days. And I also try to connect these works that I perform with their connections with mathematics. And uh, my, my profile of as a researcher and also a presenter, it's precisely in uh, trying to um, research deeper those connections and also how this can improve memorization and musical memory. And finally, also to disseminate the connections between music and mathematics. Tell us, how are music and mathematics connected? There are three main uh, connections. Uh, the first one would be mathematics as a fundamental of music, like in the aspect of rhythm, melody, harmony, um, or even the building the musical instruments. Right. Then there's this aspect of the musical cognition. All of us, when we are listening to music, uh, unconsciously we are actually doing a lot of mathematical processes to identify a musical instrument or see whether we are listening to, uh, to a melody or a melody with an accompaniment. And finally, there's the aspect of mathematics in the musical creation. There are like many composers that have used mathematics to create music, but also uh, mathematics are also present in, in the way of, of counterpoint, for instance, in the music for the, from the 18th century. So uh, I would say that mathematics have been very present in musical composition, but specifically in the 20th century, it has become also an extra tool to become a, a technique limitation. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite impressive. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, you live between, uh, actually you live mostly in England, but now you're in Catalonia because yeah. of the, the pandemic and uh, you are uh, doing your PhD in Birmingham at the, at the moment. Tell us uh, what you're studying and uh, how's your life in the UK? Well, uh, for me, it was quite a contrast uh, because there's a completely different uh, industry in music. And I think that musicians, they have a greater support when they graduate. But at the same time, I kind of miss uh, that uh, it is very difficult. There's like a crystal ceiling in terms of coming from, from uh, as a graduate student to try to get into the big venues, yes. which I think that in Catalonia is a bit easier in that way. Okay. But it, it was also like a great platform for me to, to try to understand better the, uh, how I, I can make a living from music. The type of music that you do is very special. Actually, you're trying to bring classical, contemporary music to, to all kinds of, to all audiences. Tell us, uh, how would you define, for the viewers who don't know what it is, how would you define this kind of music? Well, this actually, type of music? Yeah, it's simply uh, classical composers uh, that are writing uh, music nowadays. So it's like a, a, a natural um, evolution of classical music, but today, so there are like different musical aesthetic that represent our society, I would say. Brilliant. Well, Nimbus, your latest uh, album, um, is, has a lot to do with water. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Present us the album. What, uh, what is it about? What does it uh, include? Why is it called like that? Mm. Actually, my goal with Nimbus was to represent the metamorphosis of water, and each piece has a, a different aspect of water and in a, and a, dif a different shape of, of water, how it can be represented in music. I also try to portray uh, female composers that are underrepresented both in the concert venues and also in the, in the musical yes. recordings. And also I try to complete uh, an, a tribute to the French composer Olivier Messian. Actually, the album uh, starts from a piece that was written in the year of his birth, which was 1908. It's the piece by Maurice Ravel. Right, and then uh, the piece from his death that was written in 1992 uh, by one of his students who was Toru Takemitsu. And from these two pieces, the idea is to complement uh, this tribute and also to try to explain water from different perspectives. Okay, it looks very good, I must say. Um, this is, uh, like you said, your second uh, yes. album. The first one was called The French uh, Reverie and it was uh, launched by, uh, you managed to launch it through crowdfunding. Yes. Just the same as Nimbus. Mm -hmm. And before the pandemic, uh, you actually did a tour in the United States. Um, but in that case, it was uh, 
for with your first album, right? Yeah, it was a six-week tour in Canada and the United States, presenting the French Reverie. Okay. So do you think that crowdfunding is now the best way to, to be able to, to, to launch an album? I think when it comes to repertoire that it's not very well known, as is both in this case and in the French Reverie, it's like a very good tool for connecting with potential audiences that otherwise wouldn't find you. We are really uh, looking forward to listen to some uh, music from your album. I know that today you're going to play for us. Uh, what, uh, what are you going to play? I'm going to perform uh, On Suk Chin's Piano Tune No. 5, uh, which is written in the manner of the Toccata. And she's a composer from South Korea and was one of the most distinguished uh, students from Georgi Ligeti, who was a composer from Hungary, but that also studied in France. And she's quite an established composer nowadays, and I'm trying also to promote her music. Okay, do you think that this uh, type of music, contemporary, well, uh, modern contemporary music, is, uh, is um, uh, kind of accepted in Catalonia? Is it, uh, is it starting to become more popular? I think that we need to do a lot of pedagogical uh, procedures in uh, like pre-concert talks so people know uh, what are they going to listen because one of the problems of classical music is that people go to concerts and they already know all the repertoire so there's very different uh, expectation like people don't expect something they just want to reconfirm something. I think in theater it's a bit different because there's a more balance between the classics and the new creation and that's what I try to achieve with this album. Okay, Laura Ferrer, thank you so much for coming to the Weekly Mag. It's been a pleasure. Good luck with uh, everything and thank you for sharing your time and your music with us. Thank you so much. How would you end an episode number 100? If you thought with a quiz, then you got it right. You just won one point. Stay tuned and win more.
there's no better way to finish this 100th episode special than with our favorite TV quiz and our favorite quiz master. Sergi Salvera, of course, take it away. Thank you, Marcella. Hello, 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 and congratulations for this 100th episode. Congratulations, Marcella. To you as well, the yeah. same to you. Absolutely, and welcome to Guess What Quiz. And guess what? The Baron of Kubelton was wrong. The important thing is not taking part, but having <laughs> fun. <laughs> okay, well, whatever, Sergi. Let's move on. We want to celebrate this occasion with a really special guest who we are so happy to have with us again, Mark Roderick, of course. Hello, Mark. Thank you very much. Oh, my friend. Could, couldn't miss it. It's like, you know, getting back of on the course. bicycle again. <laughs> exactly. Ready to kick Matthew's ass. I've been... Do it. Do I've it. I've been watching it. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching him. I yeah, think, Matthew uh... is the new Mark. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh... Okay, like well, insult. Mark. It could be an insult. Kind of. Well, Mark is not only our English teacher, he has contributed to our show from the very beginning, both uh, reporting and, of course, competing week after week in our quiz. Well, and I don't know if uh, you missed us or you missed playing with us, Mark? The answer I, is yes, Mark. You know what? The first five the minutes, I, 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 I was like, God, I really miss being here. And then Point I to that. him. And then, <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I did. I did honestly miss here, but I love doing the tips. I love it. It's awesome. It's uh, right, right, right up my alley. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming back. You know, I'm here to compete again and, you know, to hopefully beat Patricia again. <laughs> she needs to be. Are you still going to beat Patricia? Back on okay. track, my friend. We'll see Back about that. <laughs> yeah, all of you are all seasoned competitors. So, guys, no white gloves here today. We'll start off with some stuff that's quite special. A round of songs. Oh, Three no. points for each oh. right answer. Each of you will watch a voluntary singer sing a popular song. All you have to do is Keep singing! Oh. Sing along, okay. of mm. course! Oh. Okay, so we have here three <laughs> cards. Right, Sergi? Absolutely. Exactly. Three cards with the name of an anonymous singer each. And uh, let me tell you, not everyone has the same singing skills. Right, Sergi? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Patricia, Mark and uh, Matthew, each one of you has to choose a color. Yeah, here we go. Let's we start. Green, blue or orange. Yeah, so let's start with our beloved Patricia. Blue. Blue, blue. for you. So you are going to listen to Bella. Bella is going to be the person you're going to listen to. Let's watch the first video. Birds fly high. You know how I feel. Sun in the sky. You know how I feel. Brief distinct on line. You know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. Words that are coming to my head now are not suitable to be, you know, this answered. Is, in a TV this like, is not. The hell is she done this with is that? not singing, Patricia. Okay, so. Last year, Patricia, how are you long. feeling? How are you feeling? And I'm feeling good. Turn on, turn on. <laughs> Listen up. And I'm feeling good. Dun, 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 dun. Ta -da. Ta -da. I think we all agree that she is feeling good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all, the absolutely. song was yeah. feeling good by Nina Simone, of course. Yeah, so next one. Mark, this one goes to you. What color do you pick? It's obvious I'm Irish. Green. You're Irish. Green. <laughs> Green. Of Green. Course. Not picking then the orange. Green. He's gonna listen to Mr. Adrian. Okay? Adrian! Adrian, so yeah. watch Adrian. out. Okay, good. I'm up the deep end, watch as I dive in. I'll never meet the ground. Crash through the surface where they can't hurt. Smart. I never feel alive or something like that. Under the sea, I live in the sky. <laughs> I don't know. So, no, no, no. I know the song, but I don't know the, the lyrics. Sing, 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 sing it. Sing you, along. you are my love of my life. Oh, something no. like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He said under the sea. He thinks it's Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the, I don't know the lyrics. I, I, I get I kind of like the. Now the, is the time to hush. And let's take a look. 
We're far from the shallow now. In the sha shallow. In the sha shallow. In a normal and regular, <laughs> in a normal or regular show, you would have been kicked out of the show and lose all your points because. We'll be, but today we're in a special show, so <laughs> points to you, men. That was thank the you, right thank answer. you, thank you, thank you. So it was West, way out of tune. Really unfair. But it you was, just told you the name of the song was "Shallow" by Lady Gaga and yeah, Bradley yeah, yeah, Cooper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. See under the sky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, I was close. I was close. <laughs> all right, all right. Of course, of well. course, of course. Doctor and Scientist, what color do you want? I choose the blue card. All right, here is the blue one for you. You're gonna listen to Christian from the blue car. Right. Blue car. Take a look. Oh, baby, baby, I shouldn't have let you go. And now you out of sight, yeah. Show me how you want it to be. Tell me, baby. Cause I need to know now what because my loneliness is killing me. Oh yeah. Da, 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 Singing da, da. are killing it's us all. Be. Let's hey, stay back. <laughs> Stick to science, buddy. Stick to science. My loneliness is killing me. And I, I must confess, I still believe. When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. Of course, the song well done, was well done. Britney Spears, baby, one more time, of course. I still have her poster on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When she was 17? Or what color? Such a big fan. What color is the poster nowadays? I'm not allowed to answer that. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. So, so okay, let's move on. Well, of it's, uh, it's, all know, these uh, three item. songs, which one uh, would you have sung or chosen? Oh, oh, mine. The first one, oh, right? Shallow. What, what you, which one is Ines Simone? Yeah, Ines Simone. Mm -hmm. Of course, Simone. absolutely. Although Lady Gaga has a fantastic voice, I must admit, she not has like, an amazing voice. But her music, not, not like today's singer. <laughs> I don't know. know. I'm talking. About. I'm a huge fan of Britney's uh, personality. <laughs> exactly. Oh, of course. My feel. Exactly. <laughs> All right, for our special show, <laughs> we've got a draw. Patricia <laughs> has three points. Mark three points, and Thank Matthew. You. Guess what? 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 Yes. Three points for you, man. Hey, so we yeah. have a draw, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hope you enjoyed this because we still have two more rounds. Okay, and we keep on celebrating our 100th episode by sharing videos of some of our past guests from our previous 99 episodes. This is a celebration for everyone. Hi, people of the Wiggly Mac. Happy birthday and congratulations on your first 100 programs and for many more. And those of you who haven't tuned in yet, I invite you to do so because the Wiggly Mac have the magic recipe for learning English and having fun. The Wiggly Mac is the best way to improve your English on your local TV. And guess what? It's just doing 100 programs. So congratulations from Televisió de Cardedeu. Hello. We are Alex and Salva from the Pinkertones and we want to congratulate the weekly magazine for these first 100 programs. Happy birthday! Weekly magazine, a huge celebration, 100 programs! You have to watch Weekly Mag because it's the best way of learning English in a quick, fun way. Thank you very much for having me on the show several times. Take care! Boom! Yay! That was fun, that was cool. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. And as a reminder, we have a draw. Three, three, and three. <laughs> mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it turns out that this is the final score, Sergi. So, oh. our winner is... Uh, what? <laughs> all of them? I think I'm missing what? something I think they, here. They all won, exactly. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was well prepared, guys. But this is not the final round. <laughs> is it not? No, this is not the Good. final uh, round. Okay. Check no. the cars because I do Okay, uh, yeah, exactly. Who cares about them anymore? <laughs> <laughs> we have prepared a little surprise for you, okay? Now you are going to swap places with Matthew there and oh, Matthew. Oh, I see what's going on here. You know what here. to do. Oh, that's why you are wearing the vest. 
So I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking out to pasture here. You are being taken out to pasture. I'm being taken yes, out to pasture. Here. Okay, just for today. Okay, I don't like I that. promise, I promise, just for today. Oh, guys. Over to the dark Hello. side. Welcome okay, to the dark side. Okay, this is going to be exciting. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> the power. Okay, How does it feel? You got it already. Amazing. Now it's amazing. your time. Well, as okay, a scientist. So. Uh... <laughs> it looks good. Thank you. You look good there. Thank and you. you look here. Do I look too dumb? Much. Does this does it look alright? I was trying to look like a struggling actor. <laughs> oh. oh well to have uh, our own celebration of the guess what quiz, we found no better way than to turn our quiz master into a contestant just for one day in a quiz about in a quiz about guess what? Oh. That's right. I have been Appointed temporary quiz master. This way, we can all expect and take part in some cruel re revenge. <laughs> cruel revenge. <laughs> cruel revenge. Did I say cruel? I meant sweet, sadistic revenge. You stole the elections, <laughs> and now okay, I'm going to so steal your points. I won. So you are going to compete against uh, Patricia and Mark. Oh, I'm losing Sergi, already. <laughs> by answering questions. We're both losing already. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, by answering questions about guess what things that all of you three should know. Oh God. Oh, oh God. Wow. Oh God. All right. See, you should know. Yes. Should now you guys are going to need to use your blackboards to write your answers. I will not accept any copying or insubordination. Let's start with a multiple choice round. Look, you put American okay. behind him, he's talking about insubordination. There we yeah, go, yeah, there, there we go. go. Oh That's what's God. happening here. <laughs> nice here. Question number one is about our special guess what that we dedicated to Ireland. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. You're going to know that one. Mark, remember that even here. one? Not at all. And the question is, who won that episode about Ireland? Was it A, Mark Broderick, B, Donica Tiernan, or C, our own Patricia Escolona? I wasn't even here, so there you go. <laughs> Don't tell them. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> we ready? And show your answers. E, B, and Donica. Donica. <laughs> okay, so the answer is Donica indeed. Mark showed he doesn't know too much about his own uh, homeland. Well, Donica <laughs> was my first Donica guess. was fresh Sorry off the boat. That. He recently arrived. That was an unfair advantage. And of course, because we have an unfair <laughs> quiz master. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm the best quiz master that's ever stood behind this desk. You wish. In the last three minutes. Okay, yeah, that keep might... going. No, not okay, either. let's move on to the second question. Mark. All right, all five of us. Marcella, uh, Mark, Patricia, Sergi, and of course the best quiz master in the quiz masking history. My ego. Coincided in one, guess what? What was it about? A, pirates, B, the Old West, or C, the circus? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and write your answers on the board. Sergi, you know how to write. Is that. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just practicing. He's a struggling Remembers. actor, not a struggling writer. I have no idea. He could be a man of no talents. <laughs> All right, show your answers and go. We have A, A, and I love you, Marcella. <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> Didn't miss the opportunity to you do that. You don't get any okay, sympathy points for that. And the answer is uh, pirates. Okay, so A is correct. Oh, really? Good. Yeah, because I remember him making I feel like really he misspelled bad my name. Pirate pirate both well. Mark and uh, Patricia are correct. And Sergi, well. Was worth it. I lost, but it was <laughs> worth it. Yeah, worth okay. it. Totally thank worth you, it. Thank you anyway, Sergi. Yeah. Had to do it. Okay. Um, all right. That was quite the journey, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. You ready for the next question? Which humble contributor to this show has proven to be the real champion by beating Patricia Escola and Mark Baradric not once, but twice? Ah, uh, yes. Is oh. it A, Adina Rose Lambin, no. B, uh, Miguel Lopez, or C, Joffrey Bellez? Oh, no, no, okay. <laughs> really? Really? You, you know, it's A, B, or C, Sergio? Yeah, but you know? it, I, I mean, it's my time, you know? It's, it's okay, you're time getting the chance to draw. Let's Let's draw. Doctor. Guys, really? Okay, Here we ready? Go. Order. And Order in the house. Show okay. your answers. Thank you, thank you, Patricia. B, B, and. It says Miguel, but I couldn't miss the opportunity to just say it. I love this. you, Matthew. 
I hate you. <laughs> That's what it says. Learn to B, how to B read. B, B and B, which means that everybody is correct. Uh, the answer is indeed Michel Lopez from yes. Televisión de Badalona, who happens Guy's to be an expert exactly on Westerns, Jeez. much to Mark and Patricia's dismay. I, I remember, remember the remember hammering. That. It yeah. was nightmares for weeks after. That guy, I wished he was never <laughs> back. And then he came back again and I was like, oh, sh You know I beat him, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he came yeah. back again, again? and he, I beat him. That's the Patricia and he was, I know. He was, no, no, he was wanna, really upset. I just upset want to point out about that. that she said that we all were right. Uh, and I wrote, I hate Matthew. So if she, the fair Marcella, says that we all are right about what we wrote in our blackboards, means that you must She can't read English. Hated. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Well, anyway, one thing is uh, certain, you've learned a lot in this uh, oh, yeah. quiz, right? Yes, we absolutely. Can see that. Yeah? A lot of uh, useful information. <laughs> so, um, I love the laughter cracking up. <laughs> so Useful information. <laughs> oh, evil laughter. <laughs> let's move on to another round. So far, everything's been easy, right? Because it was a multiple choice round. But now, now you are on your own, yeah, with the blackboard. So, you have to write the answers directly. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. Watch your spelling, Sergio. Are you ready? <laughs> Sorry. Mark, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Yes. I deserve it. On the special Guess What About Spies, it was disclosed that a famous actor who played the role of James Bond used to wear a toupee. Who was it? Wear a? Toupee. A toupee. <laughs> Don't be so competitive. I know the answer, but I'm making, I'm making a mistake on... On purpose? Yeah, because I can't remember his name. <laughs> because he, what? Then do you really know the answer? I do. I oh, just no. I, 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 it, oh, no. No, no. All right, Sergio, you got three seconds. Yeah. Three, two, <clears throat> uno. And show Let's your answers. See. We have Connery, Sean Pierce Connery, Bronson. Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Connery. Brosnan. And Sean Connery. Pierce okay. Brosnan. Okay. And no, the correct too. answer is Sean Connery. Ah. Something which didn't really matter to what? his uh, fans among yeah, the really Wicked Max stuff. Diamonds are forever. That was the movie. <laughs> and if it's on a Bond girl, I'm okay with a wig too. <laughs> You're already wearing one. You are already wearing one. And just not on my head. <laughs> okay, oh, next question, please. No. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. In the guess what? Are you ready? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Sorry. In the guess what about music? We brought up the fact that the U.S. Merchant Navy uses pop music to deter S Somali pirates <laughs> from boarding ships. Can you remember which pop artist is used? I oh. think, I think, yeah. Which pop artist would deter a pirate? <laughs> Was it? <laughs> I no. think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think. All right. No, Three really. seconds, Patricia. Uh. <laughs> Three, <laughs> two, one. And show your answers. We have... Justin Bieber, Cardi B, <laughs> and, Britney and Britney Spears. Spears. And Sergi is correct. Yes. Yeah, yes. The correct answer was Britney Spears, which uh, Mark guessed right at the time. I don't know what happened now. And uh, not old. Patricia, who also chose Justin Bieber on okay. the basis of, <laughs> of History repeats itself, and I'm getting older. Okay. I'm nothing if I'm not coherent. I mean, exactly. Have, hey. Well, it's a selective memory, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's completely. true, it was Britney Spears, <laughs> okay. I remember now, yeah, I, I couldn't I'm remember. I'm like, no fun, you know, like, I always remember the wrong answers, too. All right. <laughs> we found out that Sergi is a fan of history, and on a Guess What quiz, it was also revealed that Napoleon was once beaten by which small furry animals? <laughs> Uh, furry what? Furry animals. animal. Okay. An animal. <laughs> it's a, it's a, animus. animus. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. <clears throat> small furry ah, no. animal. Hold on a second. That's not small. And we're not talking about the British. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Three, two, Ooh. one. Show Let's your answers. See. We have squirrels, a guinea pig, <laughs> and I love you, Matthew. I think that gets all the points. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, you works well, for me. I hate all you right. all lot, Matthew. You get negative 3,000 points. Damn it. That is not damn the right answer damn it. at all. Do I have credit? But anyway, Sir, the, do I have credit? Do you owe not me some anymore. points? Are you the only right thing about that is that he's a small furry animal. Are you curious to find animal. out what animal it was? Go. Yeah, because what I can't it? remember. What is it? We need, uh, Nothing. Uh, not, uh, nobody is right because the correct answer is bunnies. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. Bunnies. Exactly. Oh, you well, according to bunnies. some historians, yeah, in a no. bunny hunt true, for the emperor, true. hundreds of rabbits were released at once, but that's instead right. of fleeing, they charged towards him and he had to escape in his carriage. Also, no, yeah. no one got the point, so mm, far okay. enough for me. As the and Battle of us. Bunny Lou. <laughs> Trying. Okay, yeah. Yeah, keep trying. Keep uh, struggling comedian. We okay. Right? Let's go Sorry. to the yeah. last question. The last question. Speaking of actors. <laughs> Them. Uh, or real actors. <laughs> who's the pet actor of Guess What? Who is now the son of two contributors to the show? The pet actor? That's right. <clears throat> Which popular member of our community here on you're Guess You're talking what? about pet as in an animal here? Or you're no, no, talking no. about pet, I, like I don't understand As a, as a, as a, as a pet. friend. Pet. Friend. <laughs> yeah. An actor friend. You know, like a, a person that you like but is beneath Okay, <clears throat> It's like a mixture, right? It's um... a mixture of two popular contributors to the show. Oh, that's you and um, <laughs> oh. Matthew. Oh. I'm gonna copy you. you. Negative 500 points, Patricia. <clears throat> We're teaming up. Three, here. two, Good one. Two. The answer is. All right. Please. Matthew Tree, right? <laughs> no. Matthew. No, Matthew. Matthew Broderick. Broderick. He's Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick. Broderick. Well, yes. two answers at a time. Broderick. Me. Sorry. And, and, and Matthew, Matthew Broderick. Of, <laughs> of course. And Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick, that's not it, again. That's, that's the third time. This is he's a child molester. <laughs> you said, you said, oh my it. you gosh. said it on camera, <laughs> guys. Uh, oh, of course, this is not uh, Matthew Broderick, the Hollywood actor, but the imaginary son of <laughs> Matthew Tree and Mark Broderick, um, <laughs> who we created in you. some dark room, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, oh God. The scriptwriter had this fantastic idea. Ago. Some dark right. mind had this idea, actually. <laughs> His name is Tony. <laughs> Tony Leg, yes. We know who Tony Leg is. And you okay, can never unsee doctor. it. Never be What's able to see it. I've worked in a number of labs and seen a number of mutants, and I've never seen anything more horrifying <laughs> than that image. Exactly. Guard forever. This is Frankenstein's monster, but <laughs> uglier. <laughs> Okay, and with this uh, amazing picture, we are going to end today's special, guess what? And I also want to share this information with you guys, that today is mm, Patricia's last show as a quiz player. She's going to keep playing with us in the show, not as a, not as a player in the quiz. Mm -hmm. She's leaving the quiz. She's been mm -hmm. a good sport, and I love being playing. I mean, I love playing mm -hmm. with you, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, we'll miss Patricia, but we'll still uh, like to count on uh, her collaborations with the program, but we'd also like to offer her a little souvenir from us, I know which, you. Patricia, you will find under your desk. Please have a look. Finally, after winning... Oh. It's not this, right? Because I'm going to miss this, too. <laughs> after winning more box. shows it's that we have already box. broadcast. This? Yep. Wow. Okay. Let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna wear this with a lot of pride. The Thank you very much. The champion. The champion. This is very beautiful, Patricia. Well well I'm gonna miss you all too. This is this is well, been really really fun. Patricia. Even you, my love. Yes. <laughs> she said. Speech, 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 speech. I'm gonna miss all of you. Oh, I don't know what to say. This is really, this has been really really fun. It is, it's been a great experience, which I never thought I would have. Actually, I would never thought. <laughs> I would show how intelligent I am in front of so many. No. Oh. What I wanted to say, what I wanted to say is thank you very, very much, all of you, and the team and everyone. I hope to be coming back here to the Weekly Mac, of course, eventually. Um, and that's it. This is not the only surprise we're going <clears> to <throat> get here today. It's going to be something, something else. See you. Ooh. What? Where's what? Finally... he going now? Finally, he's leaving, no? Finally. <laughs> now they're bringing him out the back to shoot him. You did this. I'm sure you did this. <laughs> you want to stay forever there. <laughs> Finally, we got rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> you can stay, yeah, Patricia. Patricia. <laughs> it's time to say happy Yay! birthday oh my to God. you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mr. Weekly Mike. Mike. Thank you. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you. Wow. Quickly, Woo! one, two, three. <laughs> there we go. <laughs>
powerful. Yes. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, well, we're so happy to have uh, reached our 100th show in such great company. I'd like to thank all our players, guests, and everyone else who has participated in our program in any way. Also, thanks to the show's entire crew. But most of all, thanks to all our viewers, either through local TV stations or over the internet. And the Weekly Mic continues next Saturday. We'll leave you with uh, some more guests who have sent their messages. Thanks for watching, keep up your English and have a great week. Bye bye. Let's celebrate. Come on now. Congratulations for reaching 100 programs. Congrats to the Weekly Mag. Congratulations on these 100 programs. Well done, guys. Go, Weekly Mag. 100 programs. Very happy for you. Happy birthday and congratulations on your first 100 programs. Congratulations to the Weekly Magazine on your 100 shows. Happy birthday. Well done and congratulations. Happy, happy birthday! Congratulations from Televisió de Cardedeu. Congratulations for those 100 programs. 100 programs! Yoo-hoo! Guys, keep it up. You rock!